In the four years and countless hours that I've played Warzone, I have learned the key to using the best of the best when it comes to creating a loadout. And while it's not a hard concept to wrap your head around, there are some small, fine details that you need to pay attention to, some of which you might not even think about or know about. So let's fix that. To start, we're gonna break this video down into three main concepts, all of which are incredibly important and vital to building the correct loadout. So be sure to listen up to all three, but first, let's start from the beginning. Before before you jump over to the large creators that you see on YouTube and Twitch, you need to first ask yourself, what is your true skill level? A lot of those creators are using loadouts that are catered to them and their ability to do a number of things within Warzone. And that might not necessarily work for you. And I know it's just easier to go into someone's chat or go look up online, you know, the top loadout right now, top meta loadout, top whatever. But take a step back first and truly ask yourself if you have the ability to use some some of those loadouts to their full potential. The top meta picks are always going to be the strongest, no doubt. I'm not saying that they're not. However, if you can't use those loadouts to their full potential, then they're not worth using. So when you go and look at those loadouts, you need to ask yourself, what is your skill level? And by that, I'm going to give you three examples. How well can you control recoil? How well can you track an enemy while shooting at them while they're running, sliding, diving, whatever it might be? And the biggest one, how many hours per day do you play? If you are incredibly good at controlling recoil and knowing how to use aim assist and rotational aim assist, we'll talk about those in a second to your advantage, then yes, some of those top meta loadouts are going to be the best for you to use. Because if you're able to control your recoil very well at super long distances on the loadouts that are super unforgiving, then yeah, those loadouts are probably going to work out for you. Now, an example of that would be the MTZ 762 or really any of the battle rifles because they tend to have lower mag capacity and and lower fire rates. However, their damage profiles are usually higher. So with a higher damage profile and a lower fire rate, it's super unforgiving. Because if you miss one or two shots, then it's gonna raise the time to kill that it takes to kill the person that you're shooting at tremendously. Now compare that to something like the SVT, which has a super high fire rate and a 60 round mag, and its damage profile is right in the middle. So if you do miss a couple shots, it's super easy to regain back and still get that lower time to kill. Now I wanna talk about about tracking and before we do that let's talk about aim assist and rotational aim assist aim assist is the biggest controversy in warzone it basically helps out controller players a lot more than mouse and key players because it's more difficult for a controller player to aim at a target and aim assist is what kind of makes good players look like they have sticky aim because they know how to abuse it and the way to abuse it is to use rotational aim assist when you are shooting at an enemy and moving left to right strafing rotational aim assist is going to kick in and it makes makes your aim assist even stronger than it would be without moving whatsoever. So like I said, this is what makes it look like a good player has sticky aim. And this is what can make or break your ability to track your target. If you're really good at abusing this mechanic in the game, then you're going to be able to track your target no problem at longer ranges and get those faster time to kills no matter the range. And then lastly, on the topic of your skill level, you need to consider how much time you have to play per day. And what are you doing with that time? If you're leveling up guns, playing plunder, what not okay use whatever you need to do whatever you want to do if you're playing ranked then you need to take that into account and really use the best of the best that fits your playstyle. now before we move on to section two i want to give some examples of a loadout that takes all three of these things into consideration if you're doing them perfectly and if you're doing them not well at all so i have two loadouts to show you that are perfect examples of if you're able to do all of these things perfectly and play a good amount and that's going to be one the ram 7 which at the time of recording this video is the top meta loadout and it has a ton of recoil. However, if you could manage that recoil, learn the pattern, take the time to do so, and really master it, then you're going to be frying people at any range in the game with super fast time to kills. Another one that fits this category that is super unforgiving is like the Sidewinder. You take the Sidewinder, it has a very slow rate of fire when on full auto, and the recoil is disgusting. But it has a high damage profile. So if you can learn that recoil pattern and are able to track really well with it, then you're probably gonna get super fast time to kills. Now I'm not recommending you use that because it does have a lot of other issues, but it's just an example of something that is super unforgiving and has a high recoil and everything. Now, if you're not able to do any of the things that we just talked about, then something like the SVA or the TAC Evolver or the TAC Eradicator are all gonna be super good options. These all have super high fire rates, low recoil, and are super forgiving if you 
you miss your shots. So those are some things to keep in mind when you're looking at your skill level. Now let's move on to playstyle. Playstyle is one of the most important things in Call of Duty Warzone. And there's so many different playstyles out there. You could be an aggressive player. You could be a player that strictly goes for kills. It doesn't matter how late you get into the game. As long as you get over 10 kills, you're happy. You could be a player that goes for wins and goes for end zones. Or you could be a completely passive player that likes to sit somewhere, is feels safe on top of a building or in a building, held up and just able to snipe at people or shoot at people from super far ranges. So typically, if you fall into the first two categories, being an aggressive player and just wanting to go for kills, you're going to be wanting to master the best of the best, the top meta loadouts, every single meta, every single patch, learn the recoil on it, learn the limits on it and use it. On the other end of the spectrum, if you are a player that's going for end zone, then it doesn't matter as much using the best of the best. You're not going to be challenging a lot of fights. You're not going to be going for a ton of kills. You're going to be going for placement, positioning, and wins. So that kind of opens up the playing field of what you can use or what you should use. You should still use the best of the best in terms of damage and time to kill. However, it allows for some room for versatility because you're probably not going to be tracking at super far ranges. You're only going to be fighting really within 50 meters at the end of the game when the circles are small. Then you can kind of use more unforgiving loadouts because you're not going to be wasting bullets or missing shots super far away. So you can more effectively use something like the MTZ 762 or some of the battle rifles that are really good. And then if you're a passive player and you're just kind of holding up for a building, playing playing the game to have fun, doing whatever, then I suggest you use some of the more forgiving loadouts. Now if that's your playstyle and you have the ability to master the non-forgiving loadouts, then by all means do it. Something like the SVA, the Holger, the TAC Evolver, those are all going to be super good options. Now lastly, let's bring all of this together because a good player knows how to master every piece of Warzone, the loadouts, the mechanics, and everything. So we're going to take the three points from section one and two of the points from section two and marry them together. If you're good at controlling recoil, good at tracking, and play a decent amount of hours per day, or even if you don't, but you're still good at those first two, then you're probably going to be categorized as one of the more aggro players, and you're going to want to be using the fastest killing, the best movement, the best handling, and the more unforgiving loadouts due to that. These loadouts are going to have the highest damage per mag and they're not going to be as easy to use. If you're not that good at controlling recoil and you're still learning how to do that, you're not that good at tracking and you're still learning how to do that, or if you just don't have enough time to play per day, then you're going to want to be more of a passive player. Try and go for placements, use the more forgiving loadouts and get into the end zone game. These loadouts will have a lower damage per mag, but their ease of use will be insanely higher. Now, some of these metrics that I've been talking about can be easily found online through tools like truegamedata.com. I will put a link to that down below. I am not sponsored or anything, but it's a tool that I use to find out what a loadout can do. And you have the ability to compare multiple different loadouts if you want to. So if you do have any questions about any of the things that we just talked about, be sure to comment down below your question, what you might need more clarification on, whatever it might be. And if you're a big fan of ranked play, but are struggling to gain SR, then I highly recommend that you check out the video on screen right now, where we go over some top, top ranked play tips and tricks for you to be able to climb the SR ladder.